Hey everybody, it's Jeff. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss how the bull markets end. And uh, if you've been paying attention to any market, they've all been going up, especially Bitcoin, the stock market, sports cards, to outrageous levels. And the idea of them being in a bubble is not new. They certainly are. And we could be in bubbles for far longer than people understand or believe. And we could be in bubbles for a long time. The key is at what point, what kind of indicators do you have to see to know a bubble is popping? And I'm going to jump into that right now. Of course, the disclaimer, this is not financial advice, just my opinions. Most of them will probably be wrong at some point. Uh, and don't make any big trading decisions on this without consulting some financial advisor, someone who you really value their opinion. And of course, please be careful with your money. So this is a life cycle of a bull market. This is perhaps the most important chart of all charts in any market. I've been watching and participating in markets for 12 years and I've studied them all the way back really since tulip bulbs back in the 1700s when they went absolutely berserk and a single tulip bulb was worth more than a house at the time. Um, and then of course that bubble popped. And it's really intriguing when you're in the midst of a bubble because everyone is involved and everyone is making money, uh, at least on paper. And one thing I've noticed is all bull markets follow this exact same pattern where well before it ever takes off, that's when the smart money's in. Those are the people that have done the research and realize that things are undervalued and likely to go up. And as the market starts to take off, institutional investors take notice. These are money managers who is it's their full-time job to study markets and spot investment opportunities. This is how Bitcoin initially went from five, 10 cents of Bitcoin up to the first $20,000 mark from really $50 to $100 per Bitcoin up to three to 4,000. It still was not in the public eye. Most retail investors didn't even know what Bitcoin was back in 2015 or 2016. It took until it crossed over into media attention that really got the public paying attention. Of course, enthusiasm and everyone started buying Bitcoins. And when it initially traded up to 20,000, you heard taxi drivers, You everyone suddenly was involved in cryptocurrencies. And of course, greed and delusion in the new paradigm. Anytime you hear it's a new paradigm, uh, we're within very close to the end of the bubble. And how bubbles in, there's always the initial sharp break and then a mild rebound that never makes it back to the highs. That's the key. And then, but on that mild rebound, all the believers, all the public who still own it are saying, oh, there we go. That was just a healthy correction. We're going to return to normal before the market tips over and just it goes down sharply. So how do bull markets end? And in my opinion, this is what I've studied and figured out. They end one of four ways and typically they end in all four of these ways and the most importantly is we just run out of new buyers and if you notice on the previous slide the retail is always the last one to get into a market whenever you hear a ton of people now involved in a market that never knew this market existed just six months ago or have no idea what they're actually doing that means we're very close to the end of a bull market uh, I see this happening all the time in the stock market today. Um, people that are talking about the stock market really have no idea what they're doing, but yet they're handing out stock tips, they're getting stock tips, they're making money on paper, at least uh, what they believe they are. And unfortunately, I, I strongly believe they will get crushed in the next six months. Then another way a bull market ends is supply increases dramatically. And I'll go through some examples of this, but uh, you think back to the sports cards boom and eventually the uh, sports card creators printed so much. And in the late nineties, they created what's called the junk wax era where they just flooded the market with supply. Third, and this is really once the market tips over selling creates selling. This happens in all markets and it's usually after the bubble pops and after that initial rebound, and then it starts to fall again. And almost always you get people that maybe miss the bull run and the market tips over and they think, man, I'm buying on a break. What a great deal. That is the worst time to buy. Uh, that is a time you get out or don't touch it at all. And then lastly, the original catalyst to the bull market changes. 
or goes away. And this is something that's important to watch in the stock market today, where obviously the catalyst to this bull market is just the massive printing of money and, and giving it away for free. I mean, you think about all the money they gave away to individual people through stimulus, multiple stimulus checks, let alone the businesses they gave free loans to and have asked not to be paid back. Well, once that free money stops coming, the reality sets in that the market now has to stand on its own leg and it wouldn't be a big deal if the market wasn't so overvalued. So let's go into some real examples here of passable markets and how they ended. And this is Bitcoin in 2017. And you notice the chart looks very similar if I overlay it to the life cycle of a bull market. It's absolutely incredible. You even got the dip to the bull trap there uh, in the late 2017 and then the return to normal and then the capitulation thereafter. And even most bull markets start slowly. As you can see, bull, the uh, price of Bitcoin didn't start going sharply higher until the public got involved. And then it almost always ends shortly after they get in. So what happened? How did Bitcoin end? Really, at, at the tail end of the peak of 20,000, we just simply ran out of new buyers. At that point, everybody down to the taxi cab drivers and anyone who had any money was put in Bitcoin because it was going to the moon. I mean, at, once it crosses 5,000, 10,000 for something that really has no technical intrinsic value, doesn't produce earnings or dividends, who's to say it can't go to 50 or 100,000? I mean, obviously we're seeing $50,000 Bitcoin today, but at the time people were making those estimations and when you could buy it at 18, 19,000 and someone on, on the media tells you it's going to 500,000, that you do the math on your little calculator and you say, I'm gonna be rich. Well, of course, once you run out of new buyers, the market tips over. Here was the other big issue in 2017 that we're not necessarily seeing as much today is the alternative cryptocurrencies. They were appearing like crazy and the public was eating it up. And in my opinion, that was one of the biggest reasons for the initial decline in all cryptocurrencies and even in Bitcoin is all the retail got involved and all these alternative cryptos spread the money out and created a flood of effective supply. Let's go to another example, the stock market in 1999 and 2000. Obviously you could see the bubble popped in early 2000. Uh, if you weren't involved, this was a tech boom. Any stock that essentially had dot-com on its name, even though it had zero earnings or zero business model was going higher. How do we eventually run out of that? Again, the public got involved, ran out of new buyers. Um, it was that at that time you could start online trading accounts TD Ameritrade had commercials out constantly about start an investment account. You could trade online. And of course, today we look back at the technology then it was laughable, but that's what people were doing. They were able to trade online. And of course the dot-com stocks with zero earnings went public create an effective flood of supply of new stocks that were spreading the money out. And when you run out of buyers, you run out of new money and the supply keeps coming out, eventually you're gonna get that tip over. And you notice what happened, we had the run up, the fall, and then the rally that didn't quite make it back to the previous high. It happens every time, and then the eventual decline. It looks just like the life cycle of a bull market. And then rare coins in, 19, in the late 70s. Um, many people might not have been involved, but at the time, and I wasn't either. Uh, honestly, I wasn't born in the 70s. I was born in the 80s, the early 80s. But uh, I, I read a lot on it. read a lot of old books and, and gray sheets from back then. It was amazing. The public got involved. Institutional investments got involved. There were essentially indexes and funds that were created to buy and invest in rare coins. As you could see, the smart money got involved in the early 70s. And then the market started to spike ever higher. And then we had the bubble pop. And you think about why did the bubble pop? And in my opinion, this is my best guess. PCGS and NGC came in around late 1986, around here and started to grade coins. And what happened before then, it was hard to know exactly how many quality coins were out there. It was all word of mouth. There was no general place you can go like the PCGS population report to tell you exactly how many in this grade are available. So a lot of people believed they just weren't that many out there. But the reality was there were. 
And when PCGS and NGC started grading coins in late 1986, in my opinion, once those populations started to come about, people quickly realized that the supply was much bigger than anticipated. And of course, at the time, most of the public had bought coins. They had no idea what they were buying and probably bought overrated coins. So you, com you combine that with running out of new buyers and the new flood of supply from the population reports. And I think that's how the rare coin market ended back then. So I just wanted to put this video out. These are my two cents on how bull markets end. Apply it to the current market, however you see fit. Um, but the idea of the life cycle of a bull market is extremely real. So, so if you like this video, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. That's all I got. Take care.